Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Hope to provide you with some uh, valuable information here tonight about the uh, rest of the senior year. And I'm sorry, it's going to be a little talking head to begin with here. Uh, I'm joined tonight by a couple of key people, but I'm, I'm admittedly going to be uh, Lauren Tomai is the corresponding secretary and uh, master of all trades for the for the Atlas board. And um, she and, and her son, who's a true Titan himself and a student at George Mason University, is helping us out with the tech piece so I can concentrate on the presentation. Thank you so much, Mrs. Coma, and thanks, Aiden, for uh, assisting. And then also on the call is Vidal Marie Santiago. Ms. Santiago is one of the two class sponsors. And uh, the other is Katie Bischoff, and they'll play a significant role in helping navigate, helping our seniors navigate the senior year. So this is just a ton of information, and um, we'll get started right away. So you have, uh, we value your time. If you have questions pretty soon, Mrs. Coma, if she's not done so already, we'll put a link into the uh, chat room that will allow you to access some questions. If you would use that. Uh, tool rather than the chat that'll probably help me uh, navigate the presentation and be able to have the questions all right in front of me. I'll probably do the whole presentation and then respond back with your questions just just for ease of presentation and organization of thought. So we'll make sure we answer all your questions between now and eight o'clock and I don't think the presentation will take us anywhere near eight o'clock so we should be done in half that time. So uh, this presentation I shared with the senior class the past two days during class meetings that we had. And uh, this was our agenda and objectives here. We asked everyone to order their cap and gown. And we gave your students the opportunity to order optional graduation products from our provider of graduation regalia, including the cap and gown, uh, Herb Jones, whose representative met with your students briefly uh, to present them with a brochure during class meetings these past two days. I reminded your students that they are expected to and they are expected to make preparations to attend upcoming senior class meetings. And then we shared information about each of the seven uh, culminating events of the senior year, which are listed here. We'll go through each one of them, some in greater detail than others. <clears throat> we wanted seniors to know how to make senior payments. Loudoun County Public Schools no longer uh, charges senior dues. They expect us to um, uh, itemize a little more specifically what you're paying for so that you can opt into the things your Titan wants to do and opt out of the things that your Titan is not doing and that's fine. So we've done that and we'll share that information. Uh, many of your students have early release Hopefully you know this, that they're leaving school just before three o'clock rather than 418 because they don't need to be in study hall. They're doing great. They're well on their way to graduation. And some of them are taking a reduced schedule. We generally rec recommend that for students who are taking four or five really challenging classes that they not take seven classes, especially one that they don't need. So many of our seniors are only taking six classes, three each day with an early release at 250 each day. That's a privilege, however, and not a right. And I do have some expectations about that that I'll share with you uh, toward the end of the meeting. There's a, an incentive for your students to attend the second semester. We wanna have a balance of finishing strong academically. We lost a lot of time. Obviously your Titans lost a lot of instructional time during their freshman and sophomore years. And we don't wanna squander what we have left. We expect to use it all right up until the seniors last day. So we hope that they'll come um, and so we have a balance of expectation for achievement and remaining engaged and, uh, and yet recognizing that they are seniors. Some of our students, seniors have not yet applied for early release. So if your student isn't doing that already, I gave them an opportunity to start the application process yesterday and on Tuesday. <clears throat> so cap and gowns, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to order one for your Titan in just a moment, if you prefer to, if you'd like to do that. I want to just explain something about the cap and gown, although it is provided by Herf Jones, it is a required element of the graduation process 
any student who's going to participate in graduation has to order the Herc Jones gown so they all match and a cap. So they were ordered yesterday. If your student was not at the class meeting or if you're one of those students who was not able to be at the class meeting yesterday, um, in just a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to order the cap and gown. That's a very important part of this process. You order the cap and gown through us. We're going to submit your order to Herf Jones, and we're going to pay Herf Jones for the entire class to have a cap and gown. We're going to pay them. You don't pay them directly. And the reason for that is quite simple. 42% of our senior class has a financial need. And so a large number of those students are going to uh, ask us to help them pay for the cap and gown. And we're happy to do that. We absolutely want to do that. Uh, but it's a lot easier for us to track that than for Herf Jones to do that. So it's easier for us to write one check to Herf Jones. And um, you've, if you can afford to do so, you've paid us for the cap and gown. And we'll just pass that, those funds along to Herf Jones. But for those students who can't and their families, we can fill in that gap with a lot of help from LCPS. So that's the reasoning behind that. So do not order a cap and gown from Herf Jones directly. Um, you'll use our Google form to do so. And it's okay to do it more than once if we discover we've got duplicates, that's no problem. Better to have duplicates than no cap and gown ordered. <clears throat> so we ordered the cap and gown yesterday and Tuesday during the class meeting, we're going to ask you to pay for it by February 1st. Uh, we'll tell you about the payment process in just a moment. The costs associated with the graduation ceremony, which include, but are not exclusive to the cap and gown are $60. So that'll be the first payment due on February 1st. Um, the caps, however, won't arrive until April on the 24th and 25th. We'll hand those out to students. Here's the QR code. If a cap and gown hasn't been ordered by your Titan, you know they haven't ordered it. Uh, you could go ahead and use that QR code to order it right now. It's a pretty simple Google form. If you're using a QR code, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, no problem. The form is also available in the senior class Schoology group. And this presentation is also going to be made available uh, tomorrow or over the weekend or by early next week on our website and on the Atlas website. So you'll have plenty of opportunities to order, but you can just be sure that a cap and gown has been ordered for your Titan. That would help. Almost every Titan was at the class meeting yesterday or Tuesday and took care of this already. But for those who know that hasn't happened, uh, please go ahead and, and uh, use this QR code or have your student go into the Schoology group for the class of 2023 or go to our website later this week where this presentation will be shown in its entirety, including that QR code. <clears throat> the reason Herf Jones came yesterday is they're providing us with the cap and gown. That's all that we're interested in, but they have a lot of other products they'd love to sell you. They'd love to sell you a class ring. They'd love to sell you shirts and, and mugs, and they definitely like to sell you graduation announcements. And our point of contact is Mr. Josel Carls, Charles, I'm sorry, and uh, Mr. Charles' uh, email is there on the screen. And um, if you have any questions, you, I, want, I, told, I told your senior I was going to tell you that Mr. Charles gave them a brochure with things that you can order to embellish your family celebration of their graduation from high school. I'm betting 98% of them didn't bring that home to you. Now nah, that's an underestimate. I'm betting 99.8% did not bring that home to you. Uh, but if you ask them for it, you might be able to find it on the floor of their car, maybe, maybe at the bottom of their backpack. Uh, maybe it didn't make it out of the building that's left on the, on the auditorium floor in our, in our school, but they got that information and, uh, Hopefully they can pass it along to you if you're interested. This is totally optional. We have absolutely no interest or, you know, we don't benefit in any way by you purchasing these things. So don't feel obligated. But if there are things that you would like to purchase, especially the announcements are pretty popular, feel free to do so. <clears throat> we're gonna have three more class meetings because we'll embellish the information that we're sharing here tonight with your Titans and talk in real specific details not the kind of details you'd be interested in, but at these meetings, they'll do things like learn how we get 350 people across a graduation stage. and Everybody gets about 1.8 seconds of fame in an organized enough fashion and an efficient enough fashion for us to have a successful ceremony. And they'll also get 
you know, involve, get some real specific details about some of the things we're going to talk about in generalities tonight. We're also going to select a keynote speaker for graduation and do things like that at these class meetings. They're going to be held once a month, and they're always going to be held twice on an A day and a B day from 3 to 4.15. Uh, for many seniors, that's during an early release period. For others, it's during a Titan time. And there are some who have neither early release nor Titan time. And I realize that's a challenge that we'll have to work with them to overcome. But 95% of our students can attend during a Titan time or an early release, and we expect them to do that. We try to make it easy by scheduling two during each month. You can see the list there for Monday, February 6th and Tuesday, February 7th, uh, and so on. I want to put, point out the middle bullet point here says the consequence for not attending a class meeting is the first and foremost consequence is your Titan doesn't know valuable information that's important for them to know. Consequence for us is that we have people coming up to us unclear about expectations and asking us to repeat what we spent an hour and 15 minutes sharing, uh, not once but twice. And what happens to us is those students who have double early release and they're working at Chipotle they'll get themselves scheduled for work on these dates. And they'll come up to me at 2.45 and say, I got to work today. And I'll say, I'm so sorry, but these dates have been in the Schoology calendar and I brought them to your attention. Uh, they've been in the Schoology calendar since September and I brought them to your attention in January. I needed you to tell your manager that you needed one of those two days off. So that's my expectation for them. We really need to be able to communicate. We need them to be prepared for their role in the graduation ceremony. So if somebody who has double early release doesn't attend, I'm going to temporarily suspend that privilege for a month at a time from one meeting to the next until they do attend the next subsequent meeting. And they'll just have to do their schoolwork in the tight time. I don't want to do that for anybody. That's more work for me, but it's way more work if your student doesn't show up to the meeting. So anyway, I just wanted to give you the rationale about why I'm telling them not only do you need to be at the class meeting, but I'm going to hold you accountable to do so. And the accountability is not unreasonable or a mean spirited. It's just, we need everybody to cooperate with this. So we now have a series of seven events that are gonna come up during the senior year. And those are gonna play out during the fourth quarter, beginning with um, Spirit Week. Spring Spirit Week is the last, last week of April. On Monday and Tuesday, we're gonna have senior class meetings and we're gonna pass out, as I already said, the cap and gown at those senior class meetings. That's one, one of those reasons why it's so crucial for them to be there so we can hand them all out, not have a hundred of them lingering around in Miss Bischoff or Miss Santiago's room waiting to be picked up. <clears throat> we're also gonna hand out class t-shirts uh, so they can enjoy, our seniors can enjoy them during spirit week and also through the duration of their senior year and into adulthood. That Friday on April 28th, we're going to have a pep rally, their last ever pep rally at 1045 in the morning. And then we're going to have a great day, kind of a mini field day with them in the afternoon where we're going to serve them lunch. And then we're going to do something extremely cool called Color Wars. It's just a nice day to cap off the final celebration of Spirit Week. These Color Wars, we divide the senior class up into some teams and they compete in Olympic type, type, type activities. These don't require a lot of skill, but they're things like uh, the most amazing game of musical chairs you've ever seen with like 100 participants. And um, seniors will get way into this. It'll be a ton of fun. We're gonna need some parent volunteers. You don't need to sign up tonight, but I just want you to know that our Atlas Board will be reaching out to you, or our senior group, I should say, our senior parent group will be reaching out to you, asking if you can help us out that day. So if you don't mind marking that in your calendar, it's a fun day to come out and be you know, just one of the team captains and uh, help our uh, teams get organized around this really fun event. We could use your help with this one. It's probably the one we need the most help with. A couple dozen senior parents who, who could help us on that day would be really nice. Prom. Prom's coming up on Saturday, May 13th. It will be held from 8 to midnight at the Dulles Hilton. And... Our format's gonna be very similar to last year. We had over 500 students attend the prom last year, which was awesome, school record. Uh, in putting that in perspective, we have about 700 juniors and seniors. So that means about 75% roughly of our students were there um, who were eligible to attend, which is just flat out awesome. I'd love to get it to 80, 90%, 100% would be amazing. 
Um, it's an evening where obviously there's a DJ and a dance. There's a photo booth. We're going to have a game patio like we had last year. So there'll be a multidimensional event. There'll be cornholes and other yard games that they can play. Big Jenga. We'll reach out to you and ask you to loan us some of those. Uh, we still don't have a big stash of them, although we're going to course of time. And then there will be heavy hors d'oeuvres and desserts that night. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll have plenty to eat and drink, everything they want to eat and drink. We're going to start to sell tickets next month. Um, big thing is we need to uh, cover our expenses. The expenses are going to go amount to just over $20,000. So we do need to have an attendance of at least four or 500 um, people who would be there. And the last thing I want to say is all the things that go into senior year and prom are certainly very expensive and not every family in our community can afford all of those expenses. So one of the things we can alleviate is the cost of the dance for families who have, uh, who have need. So there's a fee waiver process. A fee waiver would be submitted uh, directly to me through our financial technician. Your student would submit it to our financial technician in the main office, and then I would review it and send back notice to your family about whether we're gonna ask you to pay uh, any part of the ticket price or just waive it. Typically, we just waive it for those who have demonstrated need. For those who can afford it, we do need your help to pay for it. But Loudoun County Public Schools gives us a reasonable, uh, pretty, pretty sizable amount of money to fill in gaps like this. And I'm really grateful that they do that. It's not an unlimited pot, it is finite. So um, the way to access that is in Schoology. In Schoology, this is a, D, a Dominion High School page. If you're seeing where I'm moving my cursor right now, it's Dominion High School. That's the landing page, basically, when you go into, into Schoology, and then you click on this resources. You always click on resources, right? Always click on resources. And when you do, you're, the folder you're going to come to is an information folder. And when you click on that folder, it, uh, then you click on resources for families. And if you have any trouble navigating this, your Titan certainly won't. They'll be an expert at it, so that you can just send them to do it. But here's the form for reduction of fees in English, and here it is in Spanish. And we're happy to approve those for students who need that help. Moving to the end of May, the Senior Awards Day will be Tuesday, May 30th. Loudoun County Public Schools has declared that that is the final day of school for the seniors in the class of 2023. We are gonna ask our students to dress nicely. And I will admit, I haven't completely fleshed out exactly what we're gonna do with the afternoon of this day, but I do know this, we're gonna have an award ceremony in the morning. It's gonna start in the auditorium at 9.30. That portion will last about an hour and a half. Then we're going to um, move into the main gymnasium and the ninth graders, 10th graders and 11th graders are gonna join us. Parents are still welcome to attend at that point. We'll be in the gym another hour, maybe a little more than an hour. We'll be done surely by 1245, one o'clock in that time. It's a long day of awards, but that's because your Titans have accomplished so much. And we want to take time to honor them. And the reason we want to do some of these awards in front of the underclassmen is we want to inspire underclassmen to do their best work and to try to walk in the footsteps of your Titans, try to build upon their legacy. We'll serve lunch that day. And um, after school, we'll have a graduation rehearsal, but it'll be, it'll be modest in its nature. And we'll probably end that day with a senior cap and gown picture. And I say probably because in the past, what we've done is we handed out the cap and gown on this day. And we're moving that up to April for some reasons it's unnecessary for me to go into. Just it's what we need to do. It's the right thing to do for our students. So I'm afraid if we try to do the cap and gown on this day, the cap and gown picture, everybody might not have the cap and gown and then we're gonna have a conundrum. So I'm still thinking that out and we got plenty of time to figure it out. I'll communicate it really clearly to your Titans at the April class meeting. That's what that day looks like. And parents, if you wanna to come to the awards ceremony, many, many, most seniors are gonna be getting some kind of an award that day. Probably wouldn't say everybody, just about everybody's gonna be honored. And that is on, um, that's on Tuesday, May 30th in the morning. It'll be done again by 12.30, 1 o'clock. Even talking about this reminds me about something really, really important. Goodness gracious that I didn't put in here for your seniors, and I should have. And I'll get a slide in here before we post it. It is the senior 
announcement of career and college plans. That's going to be held on Saturday, May 6th. And the time is 2023. Of course, 2023. 823 on that Saturday night. We're going to highlight every single senior in a live broadcast where Mr. Catone, principal at Seneca Ridge, Miss Purdy, the principal at Meadowland, and I will MC an event where we're going to introduce briefly every single senior in the class. It does take hours, I acknowledge that, but you get to do it from the comfort of your own home, watch it on the big screen, pull up your popcorn, your beverages, and enjoy watching the unveiling of the plans of every member of the class of 2023. So that'll be on Saturday, May 6th at 2023 or 8.23 p.m. I'll make sure I add a slide about that here. And that's, again, one of those reasons why we need our seniors at every class meeting because they need to know their responsibilities. They have to do some things so we can be successful that night. They got to do some homework so our team can pull that off. Got really positive feedback about that for the previous classes for whom we have had the opportunity to do this. It'll be the fourth time we've done it. So just making a note to self here to put that in the, in the um, in the presentation here before we post it. All right, so that's on Saturday, May 6th. Then we're moving into June. On June 1st, I um, apologize for not having a chance to update this this afternoon, I met with the cluster principals today. I tried to get them to see if we could move it to Tuesday, May 30th, but that really doesn't work for them. We've had Thursday, June 1st on our calendar for about six or seven months at this point. So at 1 p.m., actually 1.15, uh, so I'll make an adjustment to this before we post it. Principals asked us to send the seniors to their uh, elementary school, the one that they attended in, in is it when they were youngsters. And I realized we have you know, probably 50, 70 seniors who did not attend Meadowland, Lowe's Island, Horizon, or Sugarland elementary schools. If you did attend one of those four, we want you to go back, and this is optional, but we're hopeful that you'll go in your cap and gown to your elementary school. If you didn't go to one of those elementary schools, we encourage you to be involved still. Put your cap and gown on and go with your best friend to their elementary school. Just walk through the halls and inspire the little wildcats, the tiny leopards, the young mustangs, and the emerging comets to be the next generation of Dominion High School graduates. The principals give us incredible feedback about how inspiring an eight-year-old finds it to see all these really tall people dressed up in graduation regalia. It's inspiring. So we're asking that our seniors, even though they don't have school that day, to um, take a few minutes out of their day and to enjoy one last day in their elementary school. In um, that last bullet point, many graduates didn't attend an elementary school here in this cluster, so it's okay for them to pick one and go with their friends or not to go at all. It's okay. It is an optional event. King's Dominion. We've done a lot of different things for senior trips over 20 years. I believe this is the best one and the one that brings our students the most satisfaction. We're planning this for Wednesday, June 7th from eight o'clock in the morning until 1030 p.m. I want to acknowledge that we have student athletes who fully expect that they will still be competing for state championships during that week. That is state championship week. It's also a really good time to be in the park because they're open, but on a Wednesday, hardly anybody's there and there won't be any state tournament contests on a Wednesday. So our tracks, just sorry to go down this rabbit hole for just a second, but our teams have had a lot of successes in the spring and in previous years, and we fully expect that's gonna happen again this spring. So I just wanna acknowledge before anybody in the class writes this day off, we will make travel accommodations to get our athletes back to school if they, their coach is saying, hey, we're gonna practice this day because we're gonna win a state championship this weekend. We wanna support that. And we also want them to be able to go with their friends. So uh, hopefully everybody will come with us. The cost of the day is approximately $100. I'm gonna talk about how that'll be paid for later in the presentation, but I just wanna explain the expenses. We've gotta get down there. The transportation costs us some money. 
I'm going to work really, really hard to get Loudoun County Public Schools to take us down there, but they're reluctant to do so sometimes. So if I can get them, that'll save us a tremendous amount of money. But if not, we're going to have to charter buses, which is quite expensive. We'll deal with it. Um, it's and it's more comfortable. Our seniors would certainly prefer to wear the ride the charter. We're going to buy them a ticket to enter the park, of course. We're going to buy them a wristband so they can get a drink from any one of the King's Dominion restaurants every 15 minutes. Keep hydrated. And we're also going to buy them an all you can eat wristband. They'll be able to eat at restaurants every 90 minutes. They'll be able to get a full meal. Permission slips for this will be due by uh, April 1st. And it's a really cool day. We generally have 80 to 90% of the senior class go, and we hope it'll be even more than that this year. It's a really fun day. The park is empty on a Wednesday when many school districts are still in school. And we kind of own the park to ourselves, and it's a ton of fun. And they don't even have to take a dollar with them. We're going to talk about how we pay for this momentarily. And but before we do, let's talk about graduation. Rehearsal is the next day. So Wednesday, we're going to King's Dominion. And Thursday, when they're real tired and everything, we ask them to come back in for graduation rehearsal. It's tough getting there, there on time. They tend to be more subdued and quiet, and, you know, following instructions. Out of necessity, during the COVID crisis, we decided to break up the graduation rehearsal into small groups of students rather than have 350 graduates come and sit through an agonizing two or three hour rehearsal. And therefore, once we did that once, we realized, hey, there's actually some value in doing this. So this is the schedule. I've asked your senior without fail to make sure that they're available at the precise time that is listed on this piece of paper. On, the, on this sheet, it's also in the Schoology calendar. It's been there since September. The reason for this is simple. We're gonna rehearse in February, March, and April, but it's all gonna be simulated. We're gonna have students seated in rows of 14. You know, we're gonna have 28 rows of 14 graduates, and those rows are gonna need to be able to stand at the right time and come on stage at the right time. We gotta teach all that. We're gonna teach it in February, March, and April, but they're actually going to do that together with the very students who are going to be seated to their left and right for the first and only time before the ceremony on this day, Thursday, June 8th. So we need, we absolutely have to have Sophie Komai here at 10 o'clock because the students to the right and left of her are going to be there at 10 o'clock until 1130. And we'll pre be able to stick to this timeline pretty faithfully. So I just need your Titan right now to tell whomever, you, their employer, whatever, whomever in their world wants them to be somewhere else on Thursday, June 8th, that I need them for an hour and a half. <clears throat> We're gonna talk about the need for graduation tickets in just a moment. And the reason I put this down here is just to say, on this day, we need everything your student has ever been loaned by us or ever owed to us returned or paid like the senior payments. By this day, hopefully that's long since finished. But we're gonna need back, unless they're going to the state championship, which we hope they will, we're going to need them to have turned back their athletic equipment and instrument if they borrowed one. Their Chromebook, the seven library books that they uh, signed out for Mr. Haberman's AP Psych class, we're gonna need all that stuff back and we're gonna need that back on that day, we're gonna hand out graduation tickets as students come across the stage for their rehearsal. And we're gonna give them uh, tickets or we're gonna give them uh, a bill, one or the other. And we don't wanna be, again, we don't want this to be antagonistic, but we just need our stuff back so that we can be responsible stewards of the resources we've been blessed by you and other taxpayers of Loudoun County. Um, all right, this is the big one. This is the big one, this is graduation. What you really came here to know is what is up with graduation. Before the meeting, the only question that was pre-populated in the, uh, using the, the Google form that is again in the um, chat room right now, you can go ahead and start putting your questions in there soon, um, was, hey, the class of 2020, the class that had 372 individual graduation ceremonies over a three-day period of time. They were supposed to go to Ion Center in Leesburg for their graduation. And so the question was asked, is that an option? It is 
decidedly not an option. And another question might be, can we go to Eagle Bank Arena? That is beyond not an option. That is absolutely impossible. It's cost prohibitive for us to do it. And Loudoun County Public Schools does have some of our high schools graduate at the, at the Eagle Bank Arena. Eagle Bank Arena is um, prioritized for schools whose facilities simply won't accommodate the graduation ceremony of their school. So for example, our neighbors at Potomac Falls High School, if you've been to their stadium for one of our rivalry games, you realize they don't have any bleacher space in their stadium and their gym is Cracker Jack Box. So they go to Eagle Bank Arena these days, took them a long time to get a slot there, but they finally got one. We have other graduating classes that have 500 kids in them, like Freedom High School, for example. So it's hard for them to be accommodated at Freedom High School. So they have priority access every year, year after year after year. Broad Run has small accommodations, graduation classes, the same size as ours, but they don't have accommodations like ours, 21st century accommodations. So we're not gonna get a slot at Eagle Bank Arena. I confess there was a time six, seven, eight, nine months ago when somebody asked me if we wanted to go to ION. There are huge limitations about going to ION. I believe there is one high school that's gonna to try to graduate there this year. We've never done it before. We did have plans to do it in 2020. I just gotta be honest with you and say, we've had 18 graduations at Dominion High School. One of them was crazy, one student at a time. The others have all been, I would say, generally speaking, based on the feedback I've received, pretty successful events. Some have been for sure. So I made a decision many, many months ago that's irreversible now that we were not gonna go to ION. So, and I apologize if that was the wrong call, but. I won't go because it led me to that decision, but just by perspective, it led 11 other high school principals like me to say, no, nah, we're not going there either. Complicated things. And one of them is just the distance. You know, it's out there in Leesburg and they don't have enough parking for all of us. And so anyway, I won't go into the other things and challenges, but I believe we can have a really honoring graduation ceremony right here on our own turf. I highly recommend that we do that in the main gym. And that's my plan. We have had graduation, as I said, 18 times prior. This will be our 19th. And we've done it inside. I don't know the exact number, but roughly um, 10 or 11 of those times, maybe 12. And those ceremonies offer a high degree of predictability and safety. When we go outside, we have a high degree of unpredictability. And as we learned last year, we can threaten people's safety. So when we go outside and we plan to go outside, twice we've had to abruptly relocate hours before the ceremony to the gym anyway, because the threat of thunderstorms was imminent. Twice we had excessive heat and we just realized we gotta be inside for the health and well-being of people. Last year, if you were there, you're probably squarely in the favor of being inside. Our ceremony was fraught with health crises. And while nobody suffered, I think, as far as I'm aware, a serious illness, we did have people transported to the hospital and we did have a number of people suffering from heat-related uh, illness. Last year, we decided as a county, we weren't gonna do indoor graduations because of the lingering COVID crisis. So it was not an option to do anything but be outside. We started at nine o'clock in the morning and it still was almost 90 degrees and we're on turf out there. That turf heats up like a frying pan. So that's my pitch for why I recommend we go inside. I'll talk, we have an Atlas board meeting on Monday and so at that meeting, one of the topics I'll bring up is how do we want to get feedback now that we had this meeting? How do we want to get feedback from seniors and their parents about whether or not you want us to try to do an indoor or an outdoor ceremony? I'll do it your way. I just want to be honest with you and say my strong, strong recommendation is that we do it inside. Either way, we are going to provide your Titan with five tickets. Tickets are only representative of premium seating. Your Titan may invite an unlimited, and I mean that sincerely, an unlimited number of guests to the ceremony. If you choose to be outside, the five ticketed guests will be seated on the turf, hot, but on the turf, very near your Titan. 
guests over the five will be seated in the bleachers, wherever they'd like to sit, open seating in the bleachers, pretty far away. <clears throat> if we decide we're gonna go inside, your five guests will be in the main gymnasium watching from there. While it's tight, for sure, uh, it is climate controlled and we have no concerns about weather or safety. And the unlimited number of guests can watch the live feed in the auditorium. And it's real comfortable in there. And the graduate processional goes through the auditorium first before our graduates end up in the main gym. Uh, the ceremony is about two hours long and graduates may decorate their cap. It's not a time for them to make a political statement or to tell us how mean their principal is. It is a time for them to use that cap decorating process to tell about their future plans or express, express some gratitude to somebody who's made the journey possible for them. That's a graduation plan. And if you have lots of questions about that, just dump them into the chat room right now. Or, or actually, it's easier for me to manage if you'll use the Google form, actually. And it's a simple Google form, just submit your questions. I do have a couple of other slides about a couple of other things I want to point out. <clears throat> the payment process. We prefer that you use our payment portal and credit card. We will accept checks through May 1st. After that, if you owe us money for anything, we're going to want you to pay for cash, pay with cash. If you're making a check or cash payment, this Bischoff in room L309 is where your Titan should drop off their payments. Remember, for everything, there's a fee waiver available for this, these payments we're about to talk about and for the, uh, the expense related to prom. So remember, the first payment is already cut in stone, dried in stone. It should be set up on our portal. I didn't check this morning, but I've asked our staff to make sure that's on the portal so you can pay it if you're ready tomorrow, maybe even tonight. It's $60. It's not due until February 1st. It pays for the cap and gown for us to hand you a nice program that has your Titan's name in it at the graduation ceremony, roses that we give to the graduates and other plant life that we use to beautify the, the stage. The second payment is gonna cover some senior events uh, and that include, that's gonna be due on March 1st and uh, class t-shirt, color wars, lunches and um, lunches on color war day and uh, on award ceremony day. We'll also likely uh, be using some of that second payment to help fund the trip down to King's Dominion. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you're not going to King's Dominion, you don't make the last payment. So we understand that we'll only charge you for what your Titan is actually participating in. But like I said, we'd like everybody to go. It, besides graduation, that's the last time the entire senior class will ever in their entire life be together. You know this from your own experience of graduating high school. And we'd love for us to have that sense of community, especially given all that was taken away from your Titans during the freshman and sophomore years in particular. So those are our three payments and the schedule will do there. We'll finalize. We just need to you know, finalize with King's Dominion, obviously, the purchase of the tickets and everything. And, and we also need to find out if we're taking school buses or the charters before we can put a final digit on that last payment. We'll keep your Titans well informed about their, what they owe us in that regard. Early release is a privilege, not a right. I did tell your Titans, I won't labor, labor on this particular page, but your Titans don't have to do anything when they leave at 250. As long as they have your permission, and I've already gotten their application with your signature on it saying, you know, they're leaving at 250. I only ask them to do one thing when they leave. Use the $5 million exit that Loudoun County Public School has just built for us and not some side exit. And as for our safety, that five, six, seven million dollars, however much it was that went into our renovation this past summer was all about safety. So we have some doors that our students like to exit out of. They're blind doors. They can't see who's on the other side and they don't always, as mechanical things do, they don't always latch completely on the way out. I just want to be honest with you and say, I don't want to be the door police throughout the rest of the winter and spring. So students have one responsibility and that is if they want to be have early release when they leave, they got to use the main exit and they do need to attend all class meetings. It's more for them than you, but I do want you to know that I told them that. And I mean it, I do mean it. We want them to come to school and we are returning to something we haven't been able to do at any time previously during your Titans school experience. But after, forever, since Dominion High School 2003, 2004, the last days of school have always featured a culminating assessment. We used to call them final exams and they counted 20% of the semester grade. Since then, they've 
lessened in value, but we always feel like it matters. Every day matters. And we're going to teach and we're going to assess all the way to the very last day. The last instructional days for your seniors are on May 25th and 26th. And I've instructed our teachers to make sure on that day, there is a final assessment due, an essay, a project, a test they take based on the learning during those final, uh, that final unit, those final few days in May. Uh, we would like seniors more importantly than taking that last assessment. We'd like them to be in school consistently for the next four months. So we're going to incentivize them to be in school when they're well enough to be so, um, rather than miss a bunch of school because they're checking out on us. So based on a combination of attendance grades and whether or not they're doing their work with integrity, we will allow them to be exempt from these last culminating assessments if they um, attend school. Uh, we'd like them to miss no more than two class periods. We'd like them to have at least a 70%. Obviously, if they're failing a class, they're going to have to take that last assessment in order to pass. And we also want them to be striving for, for excellence. So if they've got a D, we're going to ask them to take this uh, final assessment. The exemptions, by the way, going back up to the top line, will be determined class by class. So a student could be exempt from the last assessment in English, but have to take the AP Physics assessment. It's determined class by class. An absence from a class is defined as anything that had you out of school, college visit, illness. And I'll get to the fact that, yeah, if you have an illness and you miss more than four days of school, this is four days of school, by the way, would cause you to miss two class periods. Most students don't miss that much during this season of their school career. Uh, the vast, vast majority don't. So we're not talking about field trips or AP exam times when they miss a class for that or an athletic team, track team, getting an early dismissal. Um, religious holidays don't count, although we have most of the major religious holidays off already. So bottom line is, we uh, if a student has some extenuating circumstances and they end up missing more than uh, two class periods in any given class, they can still be exempt with the, at the discretion of their teacher if they've met other requirements. Cheating is something that would cause a student to not have to take all the assessments. They do that one time. We, we, uh, we, we don't want that for anybody, obviously. So that's uh, just something they can do. I don't know how big of a deal that is. When the exam was 20% of a semester grade, it was a very big deal for our seniors 20 years ago. It's a different world now. But being in school, in person, in attendance has never been more important than it is today. All right, and then for those students who still need to apply for early release, they, they, uh, if, they haven't, if they filled out an application before, it just hasn't been approved, they don't have to fill it out again, but this is the last opportunity this year to turn one in. As you can see down toward the bottom of this page, they are, those applications are due on January 20th, and I'm gonna tell them the results of their application on Monday, February 6th and Tuesday, February 7th. They have to get your signature on the application. The application is very easy to, to fill out. The application can be obtained from Ms. Lyon. It is a hard copy application because I want your signature in the flesh with an ink pen on that a piece of paper. So I know you know that your student is leaving school every day at 250 or every other day at 250. So they've got to make their first senior payment before I'll let them go. I don't want them skipping between now and then. And I'd like them to have had good grades during this first semester, so there's no question whether or not they're going to graduate. That's my last slide. So I'm going to close this presentation out. I'm going to go to the question box and see what kind of questions you have. So let me see. And, and if you don't have questions and you're satisfied with the information you got, uh, thank you so much for coming. You certainly will not hurt my feelings if you scoot. All right, I'm going to go right in order here. It says... Uh, what to expect for graduation. Hopefully we got that. If you have more specific ones, uh, just let me know. Do all students receive sashes for pins, letters, et cetera, or do we order that separately? That is such an amazing question. Thank you so much for asking that. Yeah, we say cap and gown colloquially, but the cap comes with a gown, the cap comes with a tassel, and the gown comes with a sash. So the sash, I should have been prepared with a picture. Thanks for enhancing this uh, presentation for the class of 2024. The sash is worn around your neck and it dangles down to the waist area and it gives our graduates an opportunity to pin their high school accomplishments onto the sash and demonstrate their achievement as leaders, people of character, community servants. There are many ways to get these sashes by earning uh, a 3.5 GPA, 
in any given school year by being a member of a club or an athletic team, by being a community servant. Some of our students will have and some of our students will have 50 pins. And we just want them to be able to display their accomplishments. The sash is part of the cap and gown package. Sorry, I call it cap and gown, but it really means cap, gown, tassel, and sash. The National Honor Society has a stole. Students who have met their requirements for National Honor Society will wear a stole that they do pay for separately. That's a National Honor Society thing. It's not coming from Herc Jones. It's coming from a different organization. All right, why can't we try evening at 7 p.m.? The most likely time for us to run into difficulty with thunderstorms is in the evening when the temperature cools on the earth creates atmospheric uh, issues that create a lot of threat for thunderstorms. So we find that there are fewer threats from rain in the morning. And um, yeah, at night, there are advantages like the sun's not beating us down. Or disadvantages like the bugs and the enhanced uh, threat of thunderstorms. So that's a great question. Uh, seven o'clock also doesn't give us a lot of time to pivot if we, you know, have to make an adjustment. And the bottom line is the time for graduation is also non-negotiable because we have to have outside resources. Whichever way we do this, we don't do the technicals. We have a videography company who does this, and they've got our date and time etched in absolute concrete in their schedule and it's completely inflexible. So excellent, excellent question, but that's why there are very few, if any, schools trying to do an outdoor graduation in the evening because of um, the, the uh, challenges with uh, thunderstorms in the evening. Promise schedule for Mother's Day weekend, which is when most colleges graduate. It's gonna be a difficult conflict for many families. I appreciate you uh, pointing that out. Uh, finding a venue that is um, that is functional for us is exceedingly challenging. Uh, we got to find something in our price range, something that's close, something that's large enough to accommodate us, but not so large that it's beyond our expectations. So we've looked at a lot of different venues. We're already trying to contract for the 2024 venue 18 months in advance. So I do apologize. That's certainly something that is way past uh, set in stone. I, I'm grateful that you passed that off. I apologize that it's going to be a challenge. I, I acknowledge it's going to be a challenge, and I'm sorry about that. And all right, I'm going to check the chat here if I can remember how to get to the chat. Even in uh, yeah, I can. I haven't been in a Zoom for a while, especially not one where I was where I was presenting. So, all right, Favari, thank you. I'm so glad to see that Stephen brought home his brochure from Herf Jones. Way to go, Stephen. Ah, yeah, the QR code leads you to a site, thanks, Mr. Hostin, where you need permission. That's a good point. Nick won't need permission. He's got an LCPS uh, Google account. So, yeah, that's a uh, restricted to, to LCPS email. Sorry about that. All right, Diana, we'll take care of you, my friend. We'll get you all set up. If you don't mind, Diana, you're, you're, uh, we're so glad you're here at Dominion High School and we'll get you a cap and gown order, no problem. You can use that QR code in the presentation. Let's talk at lunchtime tomorrow. We'll get you set up with everything you need. All right. The live feed to graduation will not be accessible. I'm sorry, it will be accessible. Yes, it will be. It will be accessible. My apologies. It will be accessible outside of the outside of the venue. Could we plan the graduation outside but make final decision the week before? Well, we've done that on a number of occasions. Um, so we could, we will certainly have that conversation if you want to do it. We'll see if our providers can pivot. I feel confident that they can if that's what we want to do. 
Uh, students can get to prom in lots of different ways. Sometimes there, this is a question here, do students need a ride to prom? Um, we typically have not provided transportation to prom. If that's a need, we certainly could. Uh, typically students come to prom with their friends. Sometimes they're driven by their parents and sometimes they come in uh, party buses. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a, a bad thing, but typically students provide their own, tra provide their own transportation to prom. Such a good question. You're welcome, Diana. We're so glad to have the opportunity to help you finish your senior year. We're so proud of you. All right, my friends. Put, uh, uh, thanks so much for coming. If you have other questions, uh, that's awesome. Let's see, a couple more did come in on the, uh, through the Google form. They're the same as the chat, Dr. Brewer. I was just flagging them for you. I got you, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great night. We'll get this uh, tidied up a little bit and get some uh, things posted. I would say my final message about venue for graduation is, again, I my strong recommendation is in so, inside, but I'll reach out to you and ask you for your opinion. If we have strong feelings that we need to be outside, I would just ask you to do one thing. Talk to somebody who was there last year before you develop those strong feelings. And um, if you still feel that way, that's fine. I I'll be happy to do it either place. I just want to do right for you and your graduate. Have a fantastic right. evening. My point there was we're going to reach out to you and get your feedback before we make a final decision there. Have a great evening. Go tight.